Hello, Namaskar and good afternoon. A very warm welcome to all our viewers in NCRT's live interactive session. This is Simran Singh and you are all watching this on PME Vidya channel number 10. Viewers, you can also connect with us to different mediums and one of them is our YouTube channel that you all know. It is NCERT official. So after your lunch, we have a special session of science for all class 10th students. Well, viewers from any other classes like 8th, 9th, if you have connected with us and you have any of the queries, then feel free to write down to us in the comment section of NCERT official. So in another half an hour, what are we going to discuss today? Let's get on to that. It is a session of science for half an hour for class 10th students. And you already know the concept of this particular chapter that is chapter number 10 from your book light. So today we are going to discuss about the refraction of light. Well, let me inform you that it is the second part. That is the continuity of our previous session where we have discussed about the broader concepts of refraction of light. And today we will move on to the numericals. Uh, and joining with us in the conversation and providing us more guidance, we are joined by an expert in the studio. Allow me to introduce her to all our viewers. Here we have with us Ms. Vandana Dimri. Namaskar ma'am. Namaskar Simran ma'am. Thank you for inviting me once again. Well, it's our honor to have guests from uh, different areas which have expertise regarding their subject. So it is our honor to have you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So, ma'am is currently serving at a DAV Public School. She is TGT Physics and uh, she is serving at DAV Public School, Sector 49, Gurugram. Today, she has connected with us from studio. So, in our whole session, if there are any questions that come to your mind, you want to ask our experts, you can write in the comment section and tell us. And there is also a contact number on your screen. You may also give us a call at 8800 and specifically a mail ID for class 10th students. You can write about your feedback at dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So ma'am, as we have told our viewers that today is our continuity session. Yes. Refraction of light. Yes. So what we discussed in the previous session, I will request you to please guide our viewers more about that and then we can proceed with today's topic. Definitely Simran ma'am. So first of all, I would like to welcome all my dear students, those who are watching us right now. And this is as you know mentioned by Simran ma'am, this is the second session of refraction of light, right? So what are the things that we learned in our first session? Let's just quick quickly revise sure. that once, right? So as you can see on the screen, dear students, first we learned about the definition of refraction, what actually refraction is. So in simpler words, I told you refraction is basically the phenomenon in which light travels from one transparent medium to another transparent medium. And while doing that, the light changes its path, right? Then we learned about the cause of refraction, why there is a change of path going from one medium to another medium. The cause of refraction of light is change in speed of light as it enters from one transparent medium to another transparent medium. Now, when we learned about rules of refraction also, that we, if you remember, we learned about optically denser and optically rarer medium. And then we learned that when the light ray goes from optically rarer to optically denser medium, it bends towards the normal. And when the light moves from optically denser to optical, optically rarer medium, the light ray bends away from the normal. In the last, we learned about refraction of light through a glass slab. And we saw how the emergent ray was parallel to incident ray and the extent of bending of the light at the two opposite faces of the glass slab was equal and opposite. Now dear children, we are going to move forward with the topic. In today's session, the topics covered will be laws of refraction, refractive index and its relation with the speed of light and we will be covering up some numericals also, right? So dear children, let's embark on the journey of learning. So, Laws of refraction. Dear children, we have already learned about reflection of light in the part 1 of chapter. And we know that the phenomenon of reflection is governed by certain rules. Likewise, the phenomenon of refraction is also governed by some rules. And what are those rules? Let's see them on the screen. 
So, as you can see, dear children, I have drawn a figure here. In the figure, the white portion represents a medium, which is air. We call the uh, medium represented by white color as air, and the medium represented by blue color is water. So we can clearly see the incident ray which is traveling in air when it moves into water it changes its path. So here my dear children you can see that the incident ray, the refracted ray and the dotted straight line that you can see passing through the middle of the uh, interface boundary separating the two medium. So that line, the dotted line represents the normal here. So you can clearly see the incident ray, the normal and the refracted ray, all of them are lying on the same plane. And what is that plane? That plane is the screen of your television sets or laptops or your phones, phone, screen of your mobile phones if you are watching this on mobile phone. So that means the first law says incident ray, normal ray and the refracted ray all of them lie on the same plane. Moving on to the second law of refraction. Second law of refraction is a very important law dear children because this gives us the relationship between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction. Now what is that relationship? According to this law the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is always constant for a particular pair of media. For example, here in this diagram, you can see the two medium that we have chosen are air and water. Substance 1 is air and substance 2 in which the light is moving is basically water. So, substance 1 air, substance 2 water as you can clearly see. So, here the incidence, angle of incidence is represented by letter I. Angle of incidence is the angle that incident ray is making with the normal and angle of refraction is the angle which the refracted ray is making with the normal. Normal is your line of reference actually. From normal we take all the angles. So, here we can clearly see that Angle I is being made with the incident ray and angle R is being made with the refracted ray. So, dear children, according to the second law of refraction, the sine of I divided by sine of R will always be a constant. This is called as Snell's law, right? So, what is sine? Now, moving on to re recall your mathematics lessons, children. By now, most of you must have learned about trigonometric functions. So, sine is one such trigonometric function. So, again I am just repeating this. Sine of angle of incidence divided by sine of angle of refraction which is known as the ratio of sine of I divided by sine of R is always a constant for a particular pair of media. Right? And that constant is known as refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium. Now I would like uh, you to focus on the screen once again and see. Yes. So here I have drawn a boundary dear children. I am representing the boundary by a letter B. So this is my medium 1 and this is my medium 2. Now. I have drawn a normal here, N, N dash. This is my incident ray and this is my refracted ray. So I am assuming that medium 2 is denser than medium 1. That's why the light ray bends towards the normal. So this angle would be angle I, angle of incidence and this angle would be angle of refraction. Now according to second law of refraction, sine of I, upon sine of angle of refraction will be equal to a constant and this constant my dear children is known as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 and how is it denoted? It is denoted by a letter N and in the subscript we write 2 medium 2 and medium 1. So what does this mean? This means that 
this is the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. Dear children, always remember, refractive index हम उस medium का निकालते हैं, जहाँ पर refraction हो रहा है. तो यहाँ पर refraction कौन से medium में हो रहा है? Medium 2 में हो रहा है. Right? और incident rate कहा है? Medium, first medium में incident rate travel कर रही है. तो इसी लिए हमने refractive index निकाला है medium 2 का with respect to medium 1. क्योंकि refraction जो है, वो second medium में हो रहा है. Is that clear, dear children? Now, I am moving forward. See, this, uh, can I have the screen? Yes. So, now as you can see on the screen, that this constant N21 is called as the refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium. Now, moving forward, dear children, again, we have taken some like different angle of incidences here. And we have also noted down and listed the corresponding angle of refraction for a particular angle of incidence. For example, again for the uh, medium air and water, again the same interface that uh, the same pair of media that we chose before, which is air and water. So here you can see dear children, the value of angle of incidence is 30 degree. You can see it in the table given here. So, at first we have chosen the angle of incidence as 30 degree. Now, sine of 30 degree is 0 0.5. The corresponding angle of refraction for 30 degree in water is 26.4 degree. Right? Now, sine of 26.4 degree, its value can be easily found by using a scientific calculator or you can also use a trigonometric table to find the value of this. So, the value of 26.4 degree is 0 0.44. Now, if we divide 0 0.5 by 0 0.44, we get a factor 1.13. Now, dear children, we can see in the second uh, row, I have changed the angle of incidence. Now, the angle of incidence is sine 45 degree. The corresponding angle of refraction is 38.9 degree. I have noted down the uh, values of sine function for both of these uh, you know angles and you can see again on dividing these two I am getting the same factor which is 1.13 same goes for a third row also. If you see in the third row the sine of 60 degree is 0 0.866 and the corresponding angle of refraction is basically 50.3 degree and the value of sine 50.3 degree is 0 0.769. So, all these values of uh, sine, different angles of sine can be found using a scientific calculator. So, now you, you can clearly see in this table when I am changing the angle of incidence, in each case the angle of refraction is getting changed in such a way that on dividing the sine of r by sine of r, and every time I am getting the same number which is 1.13, right? So, now refractive index, now we already know dear children that refractive index is basically a constant for a particular pair of media, right? The value of refractive index can, it also depends on the speed of the light in two media. So, let's see this for simplicity. I have again taken a pair of media here. Medium 1 is air and medium 2 is glass in this case. And you can simply see that the light ray is moving from air to glass in this case. So, that means a glass is a second medium. And air is a first medium. So, if I have to find out the value of refractive index of medium 2. Again, here for medium 2, why do we call refractive index? Because medium 2 has refraction. And how many incident ray was coming medium se aari thi? Medium 1 was coming from Right? That's why we are refractive index of medium 2, ka, which is glass with respect to air. So, sub, now how it depends on the speed of light. Now, suppose... The speed of light in medium 1 is V1 and speed of light in medium 2 is V2. So, how do we give the refractive index? 
the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 will be given by speed of light in me medium 1 divided by speed of light in medium 2. That means it would be V1 by V2. Right? Now suppose the scenario changes, it reverses. Suppose our incident ray hai, agar wo medium 2 mein travel kar rahi hoti aur refracted ray medium 1 mein jati. Toh hum kya nikalte? By the same argument we know that the formula would become refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2. Kyu? Kyunki ab refracted ray medium 1 mein travel kar rahi hai aur incident ray medium medium 2 mein hai. So, we in that case we will find out refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 and the formula would be speed of light in medium 2 divided by speed of light in medium 1 which would be V2 by V1. Right dear children? So, now yes one more important term which is called as absolute refractive index. Dear children, if medium 1 is vacuum or air like in the last case we saw that first medium was air, right? So, if first medium is vacuum or air, then the refractive index of second medium, second medium could be anything, it could be glass, oil, water, but if the first medium is fixed, that is, it is vacuum or air, then we call, when, when we find out the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to vacuum or air, we call that refractive index as absolute refractive index and it is simply represented as nm. n is for refractive index and m represents the medium here. So dear children, we have already discussed in our uh, previous session and you have learned this in your previous grades also that speed of light in air and vacuum is almost same, right? Speed of light in air or vacuum is almost same and it is given by, it is denoted by a letter C. So, in, in the case where first medium is air, we can represent the refractive index absolutely or you, sorry, or you can say the absolute refractive index which is Nm by the formula speed of light in air. Because first medium here would be air. So, as the first medium would be taken as speed of light in air or vacuum which is denoted by letter C divided by speed of light in that medium, right? Sometimes the absolute refractive index is simply called as the refractive index of the medium, right? We don't, uh, you know, give, we don't say with respect to which medium because we know here it is understood that the incident uh, light ray is traveling in uh, vacuum or air. That's why we are calling it as simply refractive index of the medium. It is understood that the incident ray would either be in air or in vacuum, right? Now, dear children, so according to, uh, you know, Snell's law, we have learned that the for a particular pair of media, the ratio of sine of i or sine of r is always constant and that constant is equals to refractive index of the medium. So, here on in this table that you see on your screen, this has been taken from your NCRT book only, right? I have enlisted, I have, uh, you know, we have the refractive indices of various transparent material. You can clearly see here that the refractive index of air is 1.003 and the refractive index of diamond is highest which is 2.42. So, yani ki jitne bhi humare paas known transparent material hai, jin mein light travel kar sakti hai, un, uh, you know, most of those materials are listed here. And you can see, the, uh, you know, we have also noted down the values of refractive indices of these different transparent materials here, right? Now, uh, dear children, I would like you to pay attention specially to uh, refractive index of air, which is 1.003, refractive index of water, which is 1.33, and uh, diamond also, which is 2.42, right? Now, I want all of you to pay attention to this diagram because this very clearly tells us how refractive index is, you know, dependent on the light bending ability of any medium. You know that refractive index is also an indicator of the light bending ability of the medium, any medium. Now, in uh, you know, the, the three figures that you see on your screen, 
you can see that the light is bending most in third case right which is the case of diamond the light is bending most in diamond why light is bending most in diamond I, I you know I told you to pay attention to refractive index of diamond refractive index of diamond is 2.42 which is the basically the highest of all the known transparent material so optical density of diamond that means is the highest right so here you can see in the first case the pair of media is air and water so since water is optically rarer than glass and diamond so it is not bending the ray of light as much as glass and diamond are bending so in another words we can also say that refractive index is also an indicator of optical density of any uh, transparent material yani ki देखिए बात यह है कि रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स जिस किसी भी मटेरियल का जितना ज्यादा होगा वो उतना ही ऑप्टिकली डेंसर होगा तो डायमंड का रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स क्योंकि हमने देखा टेबल में वो सबसे ज्यादा था इसीलिए डायमंड ऑप्टिकली डेंसर होता है और वो लाइट को सबसे ज्यादा बेंड कर सकता है नाउ डियर चिल्ड्रेन लेट्स क्विकली सी फ्यू न्यूमेरिकल्स योर राइट बेस्ड ऑन द दीज आर डिपेंडिंग दीज आर बेस्ड ऑन द फॉर्मूलाज दैट वी हैव लर्न टूडे सो द क्वेश्चन सेज light enters from air to glass having refractive index 1.5 what is the speed of light in the glass the speed of light in vacuum is given here in the question that is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second so dear children what are the two medium here here medium first is air and medium two is glass right so uh, you can see we have to find out the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 which can also be written as in the bracket i have written refractive index of glass with respect to air and that is basically that is already given in the question it is 1.5 now refractive index the formula of refractive index of glass with respect to air would be speed of light in air since medium 1 is air divided by speed of light in glass so since this n21 is given here which is 1.5 so we will put the value of 1.5 and speed of light in air is also given so we have placed the value 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 divided by speed of light in glass so we have to find the speed of light in glass here which comes out to be 2 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second now another question yes this one is very interesting again the table i had shown you we are given kerosene turpentine and water in which of these does the light travel fastest ab aapko pata hai jo sabse optically rarer medium hoga usme light sabse zyada fast travel hogi right to chaliye compare karte hain ki kis medium mein jo hai light fastest travel karegi by looking at the refractive indices of kerosene turpentine and water which is given in the table here right so just see refractive index of water is 1.33 kerosene ka 1.44 hai right and turpentine ka if you see it is 1.47 so aap dekh sakte hain ki light will travel faster in water as compared to kerosene and turpentine kyunki water ka jo refractive index hai wo sabse kam hai of all the substances given here so just medium ka refractive index kam hota hai usme light fastest travel karti hai right now moving on to the important results my dear children what are the important results here again i'm just uh, you know summarizing whatever we have learned if light goes from medium 2 to medium 1 according to snell's law it will be given as sin i by sin r now the refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 it will get reversed it will be given by sin r by sin i when we multiply the two equations then we get 1 n2 1 into n12 as 1 so we get an important result which is n12 is equals to 1 upon n21 we still have uh, around 5 more minutes to go in the session to complete the important yes, details that yes, are left over sure sure ma'am so um, yes taking this forward now dear children based on the same concept the same topic that we were learning in our last slide that the refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 will be equal to 1 upon refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 
now our next question will be solved by the, using the same concept dear children you can see the question here on the screen and please take out your pens and try solving it yourself i'm giving you a small hint if the refractive index of light going from air to water is 1.33 what will be the refractive index of light going from water to air so now we will use the uh, concept which we have learned in the previous slide here we know that the refractive index of air with respect to water is equal to 1 upon refractive index of water with respect to air now next question dear children again i would like you to solve this on your own if the refractive index of water is 4 by 3 and that of glass is 3 by 2 what will be the refractive index of glass with respect to water now in this question dear children i'll just quickly give you a hint see in this case dear children the refractive index of water is given this is the absolute refractive index which is 4 by 3 and the refractive index of glass is also given which is 3 by 2 so here we need not use the formula of speed of light in different medium because here directly refractive index of water is given and refractive index of glass is given so what do we have to do here basically we have to find the refractive index of glass with respect to water and how do we do that by simply dividing the refractive index of glass with respect uh, sorry with refractive index of water so this gives us ng is equals to 3 by 2 divided by refractive index of water which is 4 by 3 so this becomes 3 by 2 into which is 9 by 8 so i hope this is clear to you dear children i have tried to address all the numerical problems that are generally asked in the examinations also but there is a small task for all of you and the task is the questions the four questions that you see on the screen if you have uh, you know heard the topic very attentively today all of you must be able to solve these four questions thank you this is it from my side simran ma'am and dear children yeah. take some time to ponder over these questions and try to solve them of course thank you so much for providing us all the important details uh, pertaining to this particular chapter we still have around 2 more minutes to go yes, so i have a concern for all our students watching yes, this session so reflection and refraction yes ma'am they seem to be same yes, while we pronounce it yes, only a difference yes, of yes, one alphabet yes, so it might happen that our students get confused at times yes ma'am so any piece of advice from your end to avoid that kind of confusion yes definitely all together dear students if you see though the processes they sound very similar reflection and refraction they are sounding very similar but if you see the basic concept is very different reflection is whenever light you know uh, it falls on any opaque object that opaque object will uh, you know bounce back most of the light falling on the object you know on it so it will bounce back that light in uh, opposite direction or in some other direction to say so reflection is very different from refraction because in refraction what happens is light most of the light passes from one medium to another medium so refraction generally happens through a transparent medium and reflection the process of reflection happens through an opaque object because op opaque objects would bounce back or it would throw back all the light falling on most of the light falling on it in some different direction in some other direction all right so i think that is uh, one thing that we all need to keep in mind regarding the basic difference between refraction and reflection thank you so much for answering it so appropriately to all our viewers thank you ma'am thank you simran ma'am thank you dear children thank you to everyone who has been a part of this conversation and right after the session of science for class 10th students we'll be right back with the session of urdu that is titled as sir sayed ka bachpan so stay connected with ncert and keep watching pme vidya channels namaskar